Hey, Coach, I uh, wanted to ask about the linebacker play. What do you think uh, Zach McLeod and uh, Bradley Jennings Jr. can uh, can do better there? And uh, and what about the guys behind them? Um, are, are they still uh, trending up, uh, do you feel, uh, in the last two weeks since we last spoke to you? Yeah, you know, this this uh, past week, I ha having um, time to really sit down and, and reflect on our tape and, and was able to make point-of-attack tapes for, for all the linebackers. But, you know, specifically with, with BJ and with, with Zach, um, you know, a lot of it is just from it, – it, it, it's technique, but then there's also times where, um, you know, I just want them to cut it loose. You know, um, if they cut it loose, uh, I think they can be a lot more consistent uh, in, in their – in their play, quite frankly, um, you know, and then the two young guys that we keep talking about, Sam Brooks and, and Corey Flagg are doing a great job uh, for us as well in there. So, um, yeah, I think you'll see the, the trend of those uh, guys continuing to get reps uh, will continue to increase as the season goes on. And and like I say, man, they, they, they decide the depth chart. So excited to watch them compete on Friday night and, and watch them. Um, really, I think they have a good chance of putting it all together this weekend. Coach, we're going to go to David Lake at Inside the U. David, go ahead for Coach Baker. Yeah, Coach, wanted to ask you, I guess, your rough estimate uh, breakdown percentage-wise on corner uh, in terms of uh, zone coverage and man coverage, what you're calling this season so far. And if you feel like your guys, your corners, I guess, have performed better in man or zone this season so far. I think I think we're probably about 60, 40, 60 man, 40 zone, uh, somewhere in there, 55, 45, maybe, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, overall, I think they've shown flashes in both man and, and zone. You know, there's times where they've looked really, really good playing zone and really good um, playing man. A lot of it when it's not good, it's not it's not an ability thing. It's just a um, eye control issue, both in man and in zone. So kind of the same um kind of the same, uh, you know, bottom line issue when, when it's not played well is usually their eyes. You know, I think when they put their eyes where they need to need to put them, uh, I think they're really, really good out there. Wanted to follow up to and ask you just about NC State's receiver. Seems like they got big physical guys out there. Um, just what do you notice about them on tape? You know, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think they're they're big, they're physical. I think 86 has unbelievable body control. He's able to really separate at the top of the route. Um, and their quarterback does a good job putting it in, in different locations, back shoulder, um, and throws the, the fade over the top. Uh, you know, I think their inside guys are, are, are shifty. They're able to catch the um, short intermediate routes, and they do a nice job with it. But 86 uh, really catches my eye as – an individual that we have to be aware of at all times. Coach, we've got Gary Furman from Canesport. Gary, go ahead for Coach Baker. Hey, Blake, how you doing? Uh, so NC State lost their starting quarterback, but they've got two other kids who have played a lot for them. Well, the, I guess the true freshman just played against um, North Carolina. Can you talk a little bit about um, – you know, what you think of, of, of those two kids, I, I guess the, the, the guy that's going to probably start is Bailey Hockman. Um, what, and then what you saw from Finley in the North Carolina game. And, and if you think either one of them or both of them present different problems. Uh, you know, I think Hockman, when you look at his body of work, he um, he's had a pretty productive year, especially when you talk about, you know, the, the, the first game of the season that he started. I think he started off that game 10 for 10. Uh, really could tell he had control of the offense. Um, they're able, in my opinion, when, when he was in, they weren't, they did not skip a beat. When you talk about their tempo, changing it up, going fast, going slow, a variety of different formations and plays. I mean, the, the playbook to me is wide open when he's in there and he does a nice job seeing the field and getting the ball out quickly. Um, Finley, I thought gave that gave them a nice shot in the arm. Um, you know, there were times that he looked uh, like a, like a four-year starter back there. And then, then there were times that, you know, he looked like a freshman as well. So uh, I think Hockman probably overall has a better control of the offense than Finley. But I think, you know, they both present the same problems. They're both elusive enough to hurt you with their feet. Um, good decision makers and, and uh, accurate ball throwers. And then uh, one other thing, when, when I've had a chance to watch them at different times this year, it, it also looks to me like they've gotten better uh, at running the football. They've got a couple running backs that can create some different problems. What, what did you see in their running game? 
I think their running game is, is, is very, very good. You know, especially, you know, the one thing that doesn't get talked about a lot, in my opinion, is their offensive line and um, just their overall team strength from running back um, wide receivers who we just talked about. And especially up front, um, you know, number 79 is as good as an offensive line uh, lineman that we've seen all year. Um, but I think as a unit, it's probably the best offensive line, you know, we face to date when you talk about uh, all five starters as, as one whole unit. I think their running backs are both really strong players, uh, number eight and number seven. Uh, they pick up the tough yards. They, they do a great job moving their feet on contact. And that's one of the big things we've challenged our defense with, especially having a week off. And, um, you know, yesterday being a unique, unique day and having that day off. Um, it's been a while since we've really gotten in there and, and banged as a, as a defense. So that's something that we've presented our defense with and, and shown them the film of their offensive line, how strong they are and how strong and, and physical their running backs are. I think that's the strength of their team or their, at least their offense. Coach, we got time for two more. We're going to go to Manny Navarro at The Athletic. Manny, go ahead. Uh, hey, Coach Baker. Uh, two quick ones for you. One, I wanted to ask you about their tight end. He's such a big guy, 6'7", 250. Wondering uh, what your thoughts are on him and how maybe you guys have sort of defended the tight end this season. Yeah, I think they have two um, really good tight ends, both different skill sets. You know, six is more their pass catcher. And and uh, when 28 gets in there, I mean, he, he – He's as physical, you know, and as strong as a tight end that I've seen in, in several years. He's a he's a physical human being. Um, so I think they do a good job of uh, really putting those guys in position to succeed. Uh, but I think they're 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 tight end uh, number six. He does a really really nice job in in um, in their passing game. He's uh, a matchup problem. He's got really good speed. Obviously, you just talked about his height um, and his size, which you know he he presents a matchup issue. Um, so I think they do a nice job complimenting each other for sure. And then what was your second question about defending the tight end? Yeah, uh, it was going to ask you about that and then the defensive line real quick, but the, the, just how, how do you think you guys have defended the tight end this year? I, I think we've done a solid job. You know, I'm trying to think, um, you know, there's been a couple of, uh, which I'm sure we'll see again Friday night, a couple of, uh, you know, wide delay screens that teams necessarily hadn't shown uh, where we got to do a better job, obviously, than, you know, the, the offsides play versus Clemson, you know, I think that was a lack of discipline and getting our eyes to the backfield more than how did we, you know, necessarily do when, when we were in coverage. So I think overall we've done a nice job um, covering the tight end. The defensive line things real quick. You guys, sack numbers wise, obviously had more last year, but you're still getting a lot of pressure. Uh, what do you see as far as not being able to finish with the sack? Uh, obviously Greg's length, I'm sure, helped a lot last year getting those. But what are you seeing that maybe just not finishing with the sack? I, I think it's probably, um, in my opinion, and, and I don't have the, the statistic in front of me, but I, I would be willing to guess that you're seeing the ball out much quicker this year against us. Um, and it's kind of, like I said, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I kind of have that feeling. That's how it started a little bit last year. And then, you know, as we got rolling in the second half of the season, maybe we ended up with more sacks. I'm not sure if that that holds true or not, but I kind of feel like historically that's kind of how this this defense, um, you know, works. But, uh, you know, I, I think our, our pass rushers up front are doing a nice job. Like you talked about, we're doing a really good job getting quarterbacks off the spot, which might not um, result in the, you know, sack in the, in the stack column. But, um, still has a, a vital impact in, in what's happening in the game. So I think our pass rush has is, is been pretty solid up to this point. Coach, last one for you. Susan miller Degnan from the Miami Herald. Susan, go ahead for Coach Baker. Hey, Coach Baker. Uh, you were talking about the point of attack tapes, you know, with BJ and Zach McLeod. Um, and you said, I just want them to cut it loose at times. If they cut it loose, I think they can be more consistent with their play. Um, can you kind of elaborate on cutting it loose, what that means to you exactly? Yeah, I think they do a great job with their initial read. Um, and then when I mean cut it loose, just trust trust what that key is telling you to do. And uh, don't second guess yourself in the middle of the play. Um, you know, and and I've kind of tried to change my approach the last couple of weeks, maybe with, um, you know, trying to get more feedback from them instead of just, you know, um, coaching, coaching them on the field right away, kind of more of a, um, a give and take kind of, so I can get a better feel of maybe what's making them, um, you know, not cut it loose. But I think more than anything, it is once you see your key, 
trust what your key is telling you and go get it because they're doing a nice job with their initial key. It's, it's happening more in the middle of the play. Okay. I know that some guys, sometimes younger guys, um, maybe cut it loose too much. <laughs> That's right. Is that true or? Yeah, I think sometimes, but, um, you know, it's some, some it, it's funny that you say that because, you know, if you, if you looked at a, a football player as a, let's 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 use the phrase they're they're a cell phone right and they have this computer as as their brain is a computer sometimes you don't like when apple you know downloads you to ios 14.2 you know sometimes you want to take them back to 14.0 and it ran a lot smoother so um i think that's kind of you know and that's what i say maybe changing my coaching style maybe coach them less maybe give them less so they feel more freedom to go run and play but yeah some guys when they're really young, <laughs> they don't know any better. They just cut it loose. And, um, you know, sometimes it ends up well and sometimes it doesn't. But, uh, yeah, I think it, it, a lot of it is, is in my opinion, it's, it's internal. It's how some guys come here as, fr as freshmen and they're scared to death to make a mistake. Some guys come here as a, fr as a freshman and, like you just mentioned, they, they play – carefree and, and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. So I think a lot of it is just in, internally, um, you know, how guys are wired. Thank you. Awesome. Coach, thanks for spending a few minutes with us and uh, good luck the rest of the week. We'll talk to you soon. No problem. Thank you.